Hey guys, Dustin Dolby here. Welcome back to another thrilling episode of Workflow. You know we like to keep things really classy here at the Workflow Studio. So today I'm gonna to run you through a really classy tutorial, how to capture reflective silverware using one speed light in a home or a neutral monochromatic space. And I'll show you a few tricks along the way as we capture. So I just brought out a white foam core here moments ago and it's on a horizontal support plate and a light stand, so real minimal. I took a second to adjust the position, the composition of our products. And typically, if I'm in a tethering situation on tabletop photography, I will just open up the live view. That way I get immediate feedback while I'm composing, and it saves you a ton of back and forth. Just a quick tip. If you've spent some time capturing reflective products, you know you can save a bit of time and a headache by developing a system where you're not relying on just a singular small light source like a speed light, but you can rely on a bit of a smoother, broader light source overall. I mean, a bigger light source from the back will give us an idea of the material finish at least, whereas this, this gives us nothing. This is just a small light source and it's not appropriate for the material really. So we're gonna set up a horizontal bar right above our lens and we'll rest a nylon diffuser, one of the cheap ones on this, as well as a light stand below. And this will create a channel, a channel we can use to illuminate our products effectively and improve their character reliably. And you can already see just with the ambient light in the room, the reflection on the silverware is going straight up and the diffuser is capturing all of that goodness. So we have a real canvas to illuminate our silverware. And to best take advantage of that, I'm just gonna put our speed light right behind our diffuser shooting into it. Now I threw this baby into an eight by 36 inch strip box, which will give us some linear spread, make it a little smoother. But you could do that without the strip box, even and you'd be just fine. Really, it's bringing the diffuser behind everything, which is changing the character so radically, just by directly reflecting, like you see here, the broad light source. And boy, is that a different cup of tea than this. Now, I know there's some slight texture to the foam core. We're having this clipped out, so it's not a huge deal. And I've already captured our final shot, so excuse any slight misalignment here, but just to discuss how the light's interacting with everything, there's a bit of a hot spot right, on the blade of the knife, and that makes sense, because think about the angle that the spoons and forks are bending back at. It would make sense that's reflecting from a lower angle. I can refer to that as the hot spot of the reflection and I just wanna move around the hot spot and crawl it a little bit forward so we can get it onto the face of some of these metals and excite them. But versus the original, I'm already getting quite excited because it just looks very different. So why don't we move our back strip box here? Everything's on a light stand, which is really important because by keeping it static, you keep it kind of scientific, you know what I mean? You can make subtle, really specific adjustments. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit and we'll see if that crawls our highlight a little bit forward to something that, yeah, looks a little more neutral. I mean, it's kind of more averaged out across all of them. It's definitely showing off the character of the metal. Some areas look a little less exciting, but I like that the coverage Got a little broader in general. Sometimes when I move my light further away, I wanna turn up the power just to make sure it's not underwhelming us because of the power setting. So if I'm gonna crawl this up any higher, obviously the distance is increasing to my diffuser because it's angled. So I'm gonna turn up the power here and hopefully get those metals to remain excited, as excited as I am. That's nice, that's kind of right in the middle of having you know, an exciting bright area, but having it reasonably uniform across everything. Nothing's white here, nothing's clipping, but you see it's looking good. It's making the metal look really bright and we crawled it forward a good amount. I kind of like where the highlights are sitting here. If you see just versus where we started with a single light from the right, how quickly just diffusing it from the back on a 45 can build up to something reasonable. And this has many applications outside of just shooting on some foam core for having things clipped out. And this back 45 setup is the exact same I'd use for a more atmospheric shot. You can just simply switch out the surface to something warmer, add a napkin for some atmosphere, and by recycling a lighting position, you can often capture multiple sets in a variety of moods just using this simple 45 degree setup. 
And once you take some flatware photography, you will need a place to showcase it. So why don't I quickly show you Zyro. They have an amazing low cost portfolio website builder. They're the sponsor of today's workflow. Zyro is literally the most affordable option on the market, which speaks to me. Sites built with Zyro load extremely fast. And of course, speed gives clients a great experience, but it also increases your rank on search engines, which is super important. And there's already so many monthly costs around there these days. I think there's a real, real case for going with a beautiful low cost solution like Zyro's drag and drop web builder which is super intuitive and great for loading high quality images to showcase your portfolio. And any of my viewers can use code workflow and grab Zyro's Black Friday deal for a limited time only. You will get up to 86% off and three months free and a free domain for a year with any yearly plan. Sounds good. Thank you Zyro for sponsoring today's workflow. All right, so here we are inside a camera raw. And whenever you drag a raw photo into Photoshop, you'll be familiar with this module. Normally I just blaze right through it but I wanna show you a few of the things I would tweak for any photo really quick. Normally I go for the white balance, make sure it's set across all the shots uniform. I don't want it to be too blue or too warm. Where we shot looked pretty good. Sometimes if it's a grayscale or something that, you know, essentially should be monochromatic, I'll just blast up the saturation. And if it's still looking black and white after that, chances are you're in the right area here. But in all reality, I'm gonna go to negative 90, negative 99, Gretzky's number. Specifically, because when I go to negative 100, it puts in a black and white color space. I want it to stay in RGB, but essentially be black and white. So I'm going negative 99 on that. For the white values, something I like to do is hold Alt and just drag that up until you see something's clipping and back off a little bit. And that way I know they're as bright as possible. And before and after, it's kind of subtle. But it's a big distinction because it shows off the nature of the metal. And I like making sure it's as bright as possible before I have this sent out to be clipped. And with the black channel, it's not as important here. But I might just darken up the shadows a little bit. Normally, I don't mess around with the clarity at all. But specifically, just for silverware shots, I like to do just a little clarity. Just because it gives it a character in the darks that I just really enjoy. And I can't explain it, but sometimes you just got to do a little bit of clarity. Sharpening. Normally I would just do that in Photoshop, to be honest, but if I was doing it in this module, I would certainly hold Alt and apply masking so I'm not arbitrarily sharpening things. But just a basic rundown like that would get my image in a good space to bring it into Photoshop, and let's proceed. So once I'm in Photoshop, I duplicate my background layer, Control J, and if I cared about the surface, I'd be extending it. I'm gonna have this clipped out so it doesn't matter, but normally I would just make a selection and drag up if I wanted to save my surface or extend it. But normally I'll just go over the image and clean it up with the patch tool. So I would just look at things that aren't looking their best on the metals here and there. Uh, you know, little things that I cleaned, but maybe they just slipped by and aren't looking that great. Something like this. And you know, you could spend quite a bit of time going around the image and just displacing things that aren't pleasant until you get a nice smooth result across everywhere. Obviously cleaning as much as possible is a great idea. Some things can't be avoided and just show up anyway. It's bizarre. When it comes to glass and silverware, a lot of scuffs just show up regardless and you gotta get good at mitigating them. But a little bit of time with the patch tool will serve you well. Sometimes things are invisible though that you wanna retouch. Let me zoom into an area here that kinda looks clean, like this looks clean. But if I bring out a curves layer, and if I make not a solar curve, but just a really radical curve, you see how we can start to see things that weren't there to the eye necessarily. And that can give you better guidance when you are retouching. And you can spend a lot of time with a layer like this on a curves layer. And it kind of obsess because it shows you all this stuff you don't see with your eyes. It'd be great to be able to see like this IRL. But it really helps because then you're confident you're not uploading something without seeing a scuff. There's nothing worse than when you upload your product photography somewhere and you miss some really obvious scuff and someone points it out. Somebody who maybe had a better calibration on their monitor, etc., but using curves and things like this can really help. Yeah, I really enjoy flatware photography. It can be challenging, but also super rewarding once you understand the basics of the lighting setup and how to wake up those material finishes, those metals. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. My name is Dustin Dolby here at Workflow. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you can receive the latest product photography videos because that's all we do here. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Ciao.